Previously on Silas Season 1, Episode 6, we found out that Juliet is good and Sims is bad. Now the mayor, we're not quite sure where he lands yet. Also judicial. Is judicial bad as a whole? Maybe, maybe not. Definitely Sims is bad. What did you think about today's episode, Silo, Season 1, Episode 7? Oh gosh, Season 1, Episode 7, I give it a 3 out of 10. They are losing me. Uh, we're still waiting on the tunnel, on outside. What's in the water, down deep by the drill? What's on the hard drive? It's like, are we still going to do the sheriff cop stuff, or are we going to learn about the silo? Uh, so silo society is making less and less sense judicial. The mayor's office, sheriff, the janitor's closet, like it's all sort of intertwined and incestuous and secret societies. And I want to know about the farmers. I want to know about the electricians and the plumbers and the people holding society together. So they're losing me. Um, yeah, that's really all I got. What do you think? I had a similar thought about this. I like the idea of Silo as being the self-contained society and then therefore various problems will fall out of being in that self-contained society. I really don't get that feeling anymore. I get the feeling like this could have been done in anywhere and they just happen to have a background of there's a Silo. So for this reason, I gave it a 3 out of 10. Hey, same number. 3 out of 10 as well because I'm losing the the fantasy of what's going on in this science fiction. It feels like it's just kind of a political cop drama. Um, Additionally, the janitors, they're so powerful. They're so powerful, but at the same time, not. Like like Sims, Sims controls the, judici the judiciary branch, the deputies, like when, when he told the deputies, get out, we need to talk in this room, and everyone just listened to him. Apparently, Sims also controls reproductive rights because he can coerce doctors to not allow people to have kids. And also the medical asylum slash imprisonment system. He can, he can send someone away to be caught there. Um, also suicides. He can make suicides look, I mean, he can make murders look like suicides. So, so if judicial is so powerful, why does he have a problem with Juliet at all? Uh, and in fact, why is, why is Gloria Hildebrand alive at all? Like if he put her in that asylum and all of her network of friends and family are dead, he also has the ability to just kill her and then the problem's gone. And so, so it feels weird that this character is super strong, super powerful, yet at the same time, not like like it seems and see, actually seems out of character for him not to kill someone but then that creates a situation where juliet can learn about the the, the flame flame keepers very strange this show is losing me we got three more episodes let's get it done um there are some good stuff so let's talk about it in today's episode silo season one episode seven let's do it all right first thing the toilets that's right. Let's talk about it. Here we go. You've got messages. First one's an apology from maintenance. It says they broke your vase and they've taken it to be repaired. Why were they there in the first place? We learn early not to question the workings of maintenance unless you want your toilet to stop working. Not a mechanical. We fix things ourselves. So this is more data about how powerful mechanical is because they can fix their own stuff. So, like, how powerful can judicial be how powerful can the mayor's office be how powerful is the sheriff's office how powerful is the janitor's closet if mechanical is this like self-sufficient self-maintaining got lots of know-how place they could really use the levers of power to get stuff they wanted also maintenance they have a ton of power like if i don't like you your toilet's gonna back up like you're gonna get on my side pretty fast and like that feels like a low level kind of shitty like way to attack someone but actually it's substantial like imagine if this part of town their plumbing system shut down like first few days like annoying third day fourth day fifth day it starts becoming a health hazard like you could one one could actually like really attack the judiciary branch by saying we're not going to clean all the other toilets in your offices or at homes like what 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 are people going to do like they're going to get like food infected like going to get like I don't, I don't know like it, it rapidly becomes a health hazard so so what i wanted to see from silo is like this is a, a like a cylinder with all sorts of different levels and all sorts of different people but they have to work together and so i feel like i feel like in this situation after 150 years people should understand team working better they should be more thoughtful of like everybody's important in the silo right so, and it's not just like this 
egalitarian utopia everybody's living equal no it's like the janitor if he doesn't do his job stuff's gonna get moldy stuff's gonna get dirty stuff's gonna stop working the sheriff if he or she doesn't do her job then there's gonna be problems if a farmer doesn't do his job like society starves like everybody is critical so it's not just equality like yay kumbaya it's like actual equality right, right. so it kind of feels weird that the janitor's closet's like we're number one we're most important it's like how about the farmer is important how about the janitor and the electrician and the plumber right, and the right. me mechanical they're important it feels weird how little leverage mechanical has mm -hmm. when actually they have an enormous amount of leverage weird yeah because they have big wrenches that's right so toilets important if yours ever backs yours ever backs up you're gonna be in for a rough time Oh yeah, so <laughs> so Juliet walks into the cafeteria. No, no, Star Guy walks into the cafeteria while Juliet's sitting there. We notice a third person completely ignored. Let's take a look. It actually took me two two watches to notice this <laughs> because at first I thought it was just like one of these automated cleaning bots, right? And then I was like, they don't they don't got Roombas. Wait a minute, wait wait wait. And then I walk I walk, went back and watched it. This guy's doing an amazing job. Like he's covered the entire the entire cafeteria, just quietly doing his job at night. Excellent, well done. Yeah, and it's a really important job to keep stuff clean in this sort of self-contained place. So it's not just like, oh, the guy cleans floors. No, like he's got to do a good job. In addition, he's got this machine that he has to maintain and keep in working order all the time. That's right. So, and this is not, there's no global supply chains or anything. So he's got to piecemeal parts together to make sure everything's working. I mean, this is a hard job and an important one. Oh, and it's a steam cleaner. So you get, you get metal plus hot plus water. That's like the most, the worst, mm -hmm. worst recipe for, for metal. That's mm -hmm. like just oxidation left and right. Mm -hmm. so I, want to, I want to know about this guy's job. This guy meaning the person or the, as a, or the machine? Both. I want to know about the machine. I want to know about the person. I mean, Juliet's important. She's a sheriff, whatever. But like this guy, how does he do his job? How does he deal with his family life and all the supply problems and maintenance problems he has? Actually, it could be interesting. Actually, it could be very interesting. Instead, ignored. Ignored. Yeah, imagine if the floors are not cleaned, you know, like fairly frequently, like kids are eating spilling stuff on the floor like the floor in the cafeteria gets all sticky like mm, mm, mm. <laughs> no good all right and black mold starts to infest and then there's like and then if it aerosolizes now it's in the vents and everyone in the entire place is getting sick like cleanliness is important very important Whew. in the same scene the same scene we see star guy and and julia talking and i thought maybe this is like their way of secretly communicating let's watch see oh uh i think that is here which means there should be another one yeah So I thought maybe stargazing is the way the flame keepers test the waters to see if people are interested in the outside world. Mm. And once they start getting people's like like feelings out, their intentions that like how curious they are versus how like how hard and fast they are with the pact, then they start introducing these other relics and that's how they keep growing their their flame keepers. Oh, I see. So like if they this innocuous conversation, it's about these Star points stuff. of light, you yeah. know, who cares? But if somebody's like, ooh, I'm actually interested. What the heck? What are those? Like, what does it mean? Outside world. Then they could be potential candidates to join the Flame Keepers. Exactly. So I wonder if if um, the Star Guy, I forget his name. Star Guy is actually like a Flame Keeper OG. Like, mm -hmm. he's a recruiter. Which would mean that the, the uh, Flame Keepers are still around. And uh, somehow the janitor's closet and Gloria think they're no longer, they no longer exist. 
But a splinter cell. Yes. <laughs> they're, they're, they're low key enough. They're hidden enough that people don't realize it. And they're out here at night, like looking at stars, like, oh, he's just a painter, dude, whatever. And like, he's, mm. he likes to draw things, whatever. But actually, very subtle. Mm. So stars could be the way in. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Is this, they keep emphasizing Cassiopeia. That's Cassiopeia, right? That's Cassiopeia. Mm. Interesting. And it's right, right at the horizon. Mm. So they're at like, I don't know, 40 degrees latitude. Something 40, like yeah, something like that. Interesting. That could be. I like it. Maybe, maybe. Kirchhoff. Is that the right number of ages? Maybe. I think I looked it up. No. Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff's okay. law. <laughs> so this is a law of current. Whatever whatever mm -hmm. electrical current goes into a junction, whatever's coming out has to be the same. Electrons just don't disappear. Mm -hmm. I thought this was super relevant. Super relevant for what Bernard, the IT the IT guy, says. Um, because mm -hmm. the energy goes, the, the charge goes somewhere. Um, let's see what he says. Do it. That's how the power is used to water crops, transmit messages, to circulate air. All of these invisible functions are controlled by the servers in IT. Now, yeah, well, first off, servers in IT sound extremely important for infrastructure. That doesn't diminish the importance of mechanical. It's true. Right? Mechanical could be like, let's shut this whole fucker down. And then, oh, mechanical is important. In fact, he's, he's right about to say it. Let's listen. If the servers were to fall into the hands of the wrong person, no amount of power from the generator would matter. I mean, the amount of power that would matter from the generator would be zero. <laughs> would like, matter. <laughs> I don't care who's in charge of the servers. I just turned everything off. Right. <laughs> okay, but let's, let's finish this. Nichols visited Hildebrand and Medical. Okay, so Bernard says, like, he says that the IT department controls all the power, or that we distribute it, we know where it's going. But then how can it possibly be that there's this secret, very tech-heavy room that Bernard doesn't know about it? Like, like, like just the power draw alone, like the power is going out of the generator and it's distributed to somewhere, and some chunk of it is coming here. Additionally, Bernard is in charge of IT. This looks like a very computationally heavy room. So it's like if they have a hundred servers, like six of them, six of them are running on this thing. Like that's a chunk of chunk of, of calculation. Like he should know like something's fishy here. So are we saying that maybe the Janders closet has its own IT infrastructure and its own power supply that can be independent from the power draw from mechanical? And the IT infrastructure draw from IT the IT department. I, I think I think maybe maybe they have their own servers. That's possible. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't think they have their own power because, as far as we know, the only interaction that the silo has with the outside world is through that that vent through the steam vent down from the bottom, mm -hmm. which means that they're siphoning power. That that means that that um, they they judish, this janitor's closet is siphoning power. Which means that somebody is is, and I think it's Bernard mm -hmm. is allocating part power to a room that's just like 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 imagine mm -hmm. imagine if all your neighbors have like one light bulb and then one guy has like a thousand <laughs> like what is going mm -hmm. on there? So the janitor's closet is allocated power. They've allocated IT resources. They've allocated space. And they're, they're allocated personnel. Right. And somehow they're a secret. At it's some weird. point, isn't somebody like, where's that power? What's this? What's this server for? Where is he going? You know, what's this space that is right. just hanging right. out here? I, it, I mean, I'm I'm also surprised that mechanical wouldn't have gone through here at some point and be like, we need to assess how much power draw mm -hmm. each floor needs mm -hmm. because if if a, if there are too many light bulbs or too many toasters or whatever mm -hmm. plugged into the circuit, the circuit fries, and so they need to be like. This floor is able by the circuit breakers able to handle this much power, but you guys are using this much. What is going on here? Oh no, this is dangerous. It could start a fire. So then I, I think I think there would be some type of an audit going on, but not because this thing's still secret. Especially since mechanical takes pride in its work. Right. Mechanical takes pride in work, so it'd be like, hey, there's a significant power drain on level seventeen. Why don't we send a person up to go assess what's happening? Right, because it, work. because if there's a significant power draw, there could be a problem. 
Like mm-hmm. if it's only designated to use a, a thousand watts mm-hmm. or whatever, and it's pulling a thousand two hundred, then there could be a problem, and that overpower could lead to a fire. <sighs> and if you if you're a sealed place with all the oxygen, like like you That's can't right. just have infinite flow of oxygen, people are gonna die in this fire. So mechanical, they take pride in the work. They would figure out what is, what is going on here. Why is there all this missing power? Right. And this isn't some person like some person in mechanical looking for some nefarious janitor's closet. They're just doing their job and they'd find out eventually. That's right. Ah, <sighs> okay. Weird. 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 Yeah. So no two factor. Uh so super secret janitor's closet. They have a cool man trap, which is awesome, but the uh the keypad isn't two factor. So there's no thumbprint encode or uh, card swipe encode. It's just code. Let's watch how easy it is to get in. Boom! Boom! You're in. in. You can fact, bet anyone. In fact, couldn't we figure out the code right now? That's right. That's three, zero, three, five. Zero, three, five. So we can now access it. Okay. <laughs> I was noticing this uh, keypad. Uh, at first, I was thinking you could tell by the wear pattern if you're some person trying to get in what the code might be. But this looks pretty new, actually. So maybe they replace this regularly. Which means, <laughs> which means someone in maintenance or someone in is making rubber buttons with numbers on it, mm-hmm. and every I don't know month, two months, three months. They're like, we need another one for this room. Like, what what are you doing what, with your what, keypads? <laughs> what is this keypad? Like are you hiding mops? What is going on here? What, why are you the <laughs> why are you why, hey janitors? Why are you the only people in the silo that has keypads? And why do you go through them so often? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> like how secure are your mops? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do you need do you need supplies? I can ask IT for you. I can <laughs> <laughs> We know IT's running low on tape though. Uh, yeah. Uh, camera maintenance so in i think an episode or two ago we had talked about touch on this uh we touched on like this they have this like network of big brother cameras looking at everyone and inappropriately by the way looking at people in their apartments and stuff and we're like okay great they have this infrastructure but this is a 150 year old technology more and more than that from the before times they got cameras and monitors and wires and all this stuff, it's gonna to start to degrade and break down. Right. So they're gonna to have to replace cameras. And they actually talk about it, they address it. Let's, let's listen. Must have gone someplace where there's a camera down. Well, she wouldn't know that. Maybe she lucked into a blind spot. Look, we try and keep the main areas of medical covered. The last few we took went to replace the busted ones on 52. We've been repurposing cameras from down there for years. So he's talking about, he's like moving cameras around and reworking infrastructure. This is extremely difficult. You're going into the areas where there are people who don't know the janitor's closet exists. They're like, who the fuck is this guy? What is he doing with the mirror? That's right. What, what, what are you doing to maintain behind the mirror? What are you doing? That's suspect. Yeah, I'm like some just a nurse being like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm. So these guys on point, right? They're going in there, not being noticed, getting their job done, repurposing cameras. They probably have a spreadsheet of all the inventory to make sure what state things are. This is a huge job. I, I get caught on, they said, repurposing, not replacing, not That's repairing. Right. That's right. They have a limited number of, of high-tech cameras that they once they're gone, they're gone. So, so this actually, this operation of the janitor's closet while they're observing people is limited in years by the number of cameras mm-hmm. that they have. And once they're gone, they're gone. So I wonder what their supply is like if it's dwindling and their grip on power is diminishing. So I guess the lesson is if there's ever a catastrophic world event where we're like, let's build a silo right now, you just grab up every camera. Every you camera, can. grab it up. <laughs> and people are like, like, grab toilet paper and cameras. cameras. Let's go, That's we're good. <laughs> and put them in behind mirrors in everybody's apartment hmm. for spying. For spying. For spying. For, for actually, for societal cohesion and stability. Big Brother stuff. <laughs> Oh, this brought up a lot of questions for me. So this is like the uh, nursery where the babies are stored. 
yeah. for lack of a better term. <laughs> <laughs> Where they, the baby sleep at. <laughs> <Yeah>. um. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, and I, I'd silos underground, so they, I mean, people still probably have a circadian rhythm, so they're going to do a 24-hour cycle. But, like, I don't know if there would be this, like, everybody's awake during the day, and then everybody's asleep during the night, including, like, there's live babies in here. Isn't right. there a night shift? There's no night shift. <laughs> there's yeah. no... Juliet and her father just stuck in and we're hanging out with somebody else's babies. <laughs> That's right. Like, we brought this stranger in here. Uh, you want to hold this kid? Sure. Sure. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> like, like fine. what? Yeah. Uh, There's no orderly being like, whoa. whoa no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah we got babies here. You want to, you want to, what? <sighs> what? Uh, orderly is at home sleeping. Yeah. It's they would be, they would be maybe they're primarily people work during this day, day, sure. time of the day. Sure. But other parts during the night shift, there'd still be a lot of people. Fewer. Here. But there'll still be somebody. I think sure. it's one person watching out for babies. Especially in the, the baby place. Oh, my gosh. Babies need to be fed, like, every, like, half hour or something. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Kids. <laughs> like, every, like, hour or something. Like, gotta be nearby. But if there's an emergency, they're like, well, I wasn't. Nobody was there. Nobody was there. Actually, there, there, wait, how many babies in there? There's, like, either six or seven in this room. I think there's one, two, three. And then three over here. And then maybe this is. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, right? yeah. So you got like, around six, seven kids. And, like. If you're feeding a baby for 10 minutes, then you're actually just rotating between all the kids continuously. Mm -hmm. That's right. Where's this person? Where, are they? Where is this person? I'll probably off somewhere smoking weed. Smoke, yeah, smoking weed, getting into trouble. Yeah, don't do drugs. Take right. care of babies. They saw a Pez container and they're like, I don't want to do this or anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shove some drugs in there and then Pez dispenser myself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Dumb water. This, so there's a water that's drugged that makes people dumb. It has, let's watch. Have you heard of the flame keepers? No. That's because they erased us. Who did? The silo, they've been trying ever since the rebellion. That's when they put something in the water so memories would fade. Yeah, Julia's like, what? Like, like, they put stuff in the water? I'm, there's lots of implications about this, about like, are, is everyone just drinking water that makes them dumb? Like, like dumber, right? Like if they, if they're doing this for decades, cause they need time for like, to people really cycle out their memories, then you're destabilizing the ability for people to do their jobs, which, which they need to do to keep the silo alive. Alternatively, maybe you have memory selective water, like you have some magic water that's just like, I want to delete this little bit of memories out of people. Like, what? <laughs> <That's incredible. laughs> no way. I mean, okay, so it can't be like they do IT and farming and plumbing and electricians and janitors and like really complex jobs. Really complex jobs. And you can't be like, here's a dementia pill. Like, it can't. It's not going to work. The here's, here's a targeted dementia pill that gets rid of these particular memories about these particular people. What, what type of wizardry is this? <laughs> so, yeah. So it's either a dementia pill that makes everybody dumb and society falls apart. Yeah. Or it's like a targeted dementia pill that like makes you not remember the flame keepers. But what kind of, what kind of magic is this? But, but even if you forgot your memory, like you can still read. <laughs> like, like, if, if anybody was like flame keepers are a thing, uh, so, so silo bad, like they'd be like, Huh. <laughs> I guess uh, I, but I, I wrote forgot. this down to myself earlier. <laughs> I forgot to read. Boom. I forget reading. I forgot to read. So I, I'll, I'll do an audio record. I forget to speak. I forgot to speak. Be recording. I what listen. are they doing recording? <laughs> they don't have recorders. They don't have recorders. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe they have the LPs. Maybe they have vinyl. Do they never record audio to the database? They never do. It's always uh, it's like keyboard input. Thing, yeah. Ah. Oh. I think I see what judicial is on to now. No audio recording. Because audio recording is the way to reach people's hearts. No text. Either. And, and reading and never, reading. yeah, when, when you read a book, you never have an emotional response ever. It's like a robot. You're the fourth Harry Potter, though. It, that game. It's just, it's so, so stupid. It's wild. It's wild. No, 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 it's not stupid. It's dumb water. It's dumb water. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a small world. It turns out, that Juliet's mother and uh, Wilkins, not Wilkins, yeah, Wilkins' mother knew each other. George's mom knew my mom. Do you know they I did. Was, was really surprised that they let a woman like Hannah Nichols have children? Well, she was helping your mother with something. 
I, I can't remember what. It was some kind of magnifying device. So Juliet's mother, Hannah, and George's mother, Anna, be collaborating to destroy the silo society. Through microscopes. Through microscopes. Yeah. And for some reason, they meaning probably the janitor's closet, janitor's closet, allowed Hannah to have a baby and also Anna to have a baby because George exists or right. used to exist. Right. Um, so it's a small world. Like, what the heck? Yeah. I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Incest. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah. How many people are there in the yeah. silo and how many generations have there been and how much mixing is there? There's going to be a lot of this, like, yeah. family overlap. This cousin is also my uncle, also my daughter. Yeah. This pissed me off. It's made oh, me yes. so angry. Yeah, I got, I was like, I'm gonna, mm, let's watch. She's blocked our view. Shh. So he's like, she blocked our view. I'm trying to put, he's trying to put a, an idea out there. He's trying to work the problem. Sims is like, shh. I'd be like, fuck you, Sims. I'm not working for you yeah. anymore. Like, can you imagine, can you imagine working there? You'd be like, hmm, I'm reporting the situation to my boss. And boss is like, shh. Okay, dude. Okay, I'm never going to help you again. All right, right. I'm going to do the bare minimum. So, and keep in mind, this is a, this. The Janus Closet is a organization that has been in, has been alive and in secret for 150 years. So you got to have a way to do personnel turnover. You got to have do leadership turnover. You got to all keep it secret. So everybody on here is on the same page. They they've gone through the hierarchy. They've gone through the rites of passage. They've made sure that everybody's keeping a secret. They're disciplined. And he's coming here and disrespecting this guy. Like, get out of here, Sims. Get out of here. I think, I imagine, I imagine the people that staff this facility have to be people that truly believe in the cause. Because you're asking them to lead a secret life. That's not something that's easy. That's very challenging to do. So you need people that are truly, like, dedicated to it. So that means they're not dedicated to Sims. They're dedicated to the cause of the janitor's closet, what it represents, and how to maintain order. So that means, well, fuck this guy. Like, yeah. I'm, I, I'm not following you. I'm following the mission. Don't yell at me. And he, he's actually done a great job maintaining the cameras, getting in in position to even be in this position. Yeah. yeah. She's blocked our view. Shh. <sighs> Sims. Mm. Bad leadership. Bad, terrible leadership. Bad leadership. In fact, he's simulating leadership. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So then uh, Sims calls in the raiders. Um, are the raiders secret? Like, they're people? Do they live in the silo? It came out of nowhere. Let's watch it. Where is she? So Sims has a, has a secret police force. All right, I guess. The, the bigger problem is that they're just stomping around, making a lot of noise in the middle of the night, but like... Stomp around making a lot of noise. So so people are going to see this and be like, they're not with the sheriffs. Where did this random police force come in from? Like, like the, Sims has blown his cover. That's right. And these people live somewhere. So these people are living in the silo, That's right. not spilling the beans about the janitor's closet. That's right. And then on a moment's notice, gearing up and springing into action in the middle of the night, stomp, 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 stomp. How is this a secret? I mean, it, it, if it was a secret before, it's not a secret now. There's going to yeah. be a rumor mill. People are going to be talking about what were these, like, what are the 10 something people doing stomping around in full black uniform? Right. Full black uniform, who's that judicial? Right. <sighs> oh, yeah. So throughout the episode, uh, Juliet has been burning bridges, and we were quite weren't sure why, why Juliet is burning all these bridges. So she goes, she marches into offices and says, like, get me this thing or do this thing for me or, and like making people upset, not wanting to work for her. She's not creating relationships for people to work for her. Let's, let's, uh, let's watch. Billings to Sheriff, do you call? Billings to Sheriff. So Billings uh, sends out on the radio, Billings to Sheriff, and he, she's like, off, I don't care about you. Ma'am? Ma'am, I told you. I told you she's not in. Where is she then? Like I said, 
If you want to see the judge, you request an appointment. I don't need one. I'm the sheriff. I'm I don't give a shit about protocol. I'll wait. You'd be wasting your time. That's not your problem, is it? Can I help you? Yeah. So that was in Judge Meadows' office. Mm -hmm. And this person is kind of just doing their job. And Juliet's running in being like, I need this and I need that thing. We could make friends with her. I mean, I would say that they're not nice to each other, but Juliet should be strategic and think like, I might want to have access here in the future. I should mm -hmm. be, you know, reasonably nice. Mm -hmm. So she burned bridges with this person mm -hmm. in judicial. Wasting your time. That's not your problem, is it? Can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for uh, Gloria Hildebrand. Is she here? I'm sorry, I'm not authorized to give out that information. Why not? Like I said, I'm not authorized. authorized. Right, you see this? This. Makes me authorized to know, right? Is she here or not? I want to ask her some questions. You might not get the answers you're hoping for. Gloria? Gloria, I'm a Sheriff Nichols. She suffers from hallucinations. It's best not to disturb her. She gets agitated, says things that make no sense. Shh, we try wait. and keep her as calm. <sighs> Shh. Like, no. With the hand. This person is wasn't particularly polite, but right. there's still no reason to burn this bridge, right? What if we need to come back? What if Juliet needs to come back here and ask a favor? I mean, well, it's within her within her purview as the sheriff to be a, a bully and mm -hmm. get her way, but but it's just really strategically unwise because mm -hmm. she could get she could get this person on her side That's instead right. in the future if Juliet has like an easy request, but you know it's not like a request. Uh, this person will be un uninclined to do it. Right. That's right. No. Especially. Shh. Ah. After as possible. I want to take her. For a walk, Gloria, would you like that? No, that's not possible. She's not clear to leave. I will order. clear it, okay? If there's nothing else, I think you should leave. How is she? Taking her. So, and then this is burning bridges with her dad, who she's asked to do favors. Um, she, yeah, she came there for a favor from him. Back. Oh, it's not safe for you, Jules. You are the last person I would ever trust to tell me what's safe. I would never put you in danger. But you would trick your patients into believing their birth control has been removed? I didn't have a choice. The only ones you're helping are the ones trying to breed people out. They never told me anything about that. Why lie to people? Did you ever think to question that? Of course I did. And yet you just went along with whatever they said? There are consequences to asking questions. Clearly she wasn't the only one that you betrayed. So this one makes sense to me in the sense that she's so angry with her dad for what happened when she was a child that she can't help but lash out at him. Um, but beyond those emotions, like he's been put in a terrible position by her here. Um, and also there's an implication that he did those terrible things in the past to protect Juliet. Right. Uh, so this is, you know, even though I had to kind of understand this one because of the childhood situation, it's still like, he, she could ask him for a favor in the future. Mm -hmm. And he might be inclined to position himself not to give the favor. Right. My, my hunch is that the, the, her mother and her brother died because of something with judicial. They, mm -hmm. they, they suicided them or killed them somehow. Mm -hmm. And so the father can't talk about it. He can't talk about it with a kid because like, she's going to spill the beans. And then now he's like, maybe I could talk to her about it. Like, I hope we could get closer and I could explain. But then she comes at him with his energy and he's like, I can't. I just I can't. can't. Yeah. He, has to, he has to swallow it and say, I have to keep the secret so I don't put her in a compromising position. Right. I'll take the heat right. and the emotions so right. that she is protected. Like if he lashed out right now and told her the truth of what happened in the past, she could then go and spout her mouth, shoot off her mouth and then, or spout out mm -hmm. the, the truth of it. And now she's on line to get killed. He's just got to eat it. Yeah. Eat it. Be quiet. Yeah, and also, I mean, yeah. go ahead. This is this to me. This is telling me that she's emotionally unstable, because yeah. does she need to be pushy about this? Does she need to like go fast? Like I don't care about burning bridges because I want to get the results done. Mm -hmm. Like she could play this out very slowly, very very calmly, very strategically. Mm -hmm. Like more or less do her job, but then but then just little bits here and there. In fact, we see it come to a head with Billings. That's right. The bar in 26 was trashed last night. The people are scared and they're angry and they need their sheriff. Billings. I'm not done. I had a cover for you when the mayor turned up asking why you never showed. I lied for you. Okay, I'm sorry. We're past that. I want a reason why you are neglecting your duties and dishonoring that badge. Oh, I mean, he's... Uh, so Juliet has been put 
put Billings in this position right. where he's lied for her and covered for her. And now he has to make a decision. Do I lash out at Juliet and tell her how I'm feeling? Or do I continue to cover for her? He's in a terrible position. And he's right. He's got this analysis is, is, is spot on. She's derelict of duty. She's she's ignoring what her responsibilities are. And I get it. She's like she's like hell bent on this mission to figure out what happened with George Wilkins. Um, and so she's like throwing my job aside. But but she's putting Billings in a position where where judicial or the mayor can be like, hey, is Juliet doing the job right? And he has to say, no, she's not. She's mm -hmm. she's not doing her job, which I think she should have done is more or less do her job. But then, as she did earlier in, in the series, just, you know, dip out, dip out a little bit, dip out a little bit here, here, here and there and put the case together. So what's the rush? Why is she so hell bent on solving George's murder and all the shenanigans with the mayor and Marnes right now? I get it. I get it in that when she's in the hospital with Glory Hildebrand, she finds she checks the vent and finds the, 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 red, the hard drive. And then she's like... Judas is going to be after me. So she bails. She's like, I get it. There's a rush then. But this precedes that. This is before she knows right. that that judicial, that not judicial. So this is before she knows that janitors are watching her. And so why? Why? She's just stepping on people. Why? Yeah, I'm not seeing the motivation why she couldn't space it out six months a year and, and just do the sheriff's job. And like SSA said, just dip out every once in a while right. and, and do your side job until you start building up evidence. It feels weird for a character that was so calm, logical, calculating, do the right thing, take care of business, to then just be off off the handle. Off the handle. I mean, burning bridges with two essentially front desk people who have no power to change anything. Why burn that bridge? Burning bridge with her dad. Um, that one makes a little bit of sense, but it still shows a little emotional instability. Right. And then here with Billings. Like, he hasn't... We're not quite sure about his loyalties, but he... his loyalty is not going to lean to you if you push him yeah. like this. <laughs> so is Juliet okay? <laughs> right. She's, she's, she's listening. Right. And the silo may suffer. Overall, from the episode. Yeah. So. Sims is a shadow dictator. He's more than just judicial. He's really controlling lots of stuff. He's controlling, and people respect his authority and just do what he says mm -hmm. for reasons. Uh, what's in the tunnel again? I want to know what's in the tunnel. What's in the water down deep? What's outside? I want to know more about silo history. Sorry. None of this has been explored. So mm -hmm. hopefully it's coming up in the next couple episodes. I mostly want to see how a silo society can actually function and not have breakdowns. We'll see. Right. We'll see, yeah. Join us next time. Join us next time.